that thou art thou my best thought by day or by night waking or sleeping thy presence my light and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Thursday. Today is the last day of March, March 31st. Tomorrow we move into April. It's good to be with you. That was Fernando Artiga um, doing a, a very well-known um, hymn, Be Thou My Vision. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. It was a kind of Irish sounding, Scottish sounding. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I, I may touch on it a bit uh, in today's sharing, but it's good to be with you. Uh, let me say good morning to all of you. Good morning, Macon and Donna. Welcome, holding you in prayer this morning, as well as Priscilla and Marion. I'm glad you're here praying for you as we start this day. Sorry, I have an itchy nose. Good morning, Daniel. And good morning, Celia. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer as we start this day together. And Blanca and Barbara, I'm glad you're here as well, praying for you today. And I don't know if I said Marion. I'm sorry. This is what happens sometimes, especially towards the end of the week. Um, so I'm going to say Marion again. Good morning, Marion. And good morning, Andrew. You get two if I said it twice. Um, holding you both in prayer this morning. And Janet and Gail, I'm glad you're here as well, praying for you as we start this day. Good morning, Betty. And good morning, Lisa. I'm glad you're here holding you both in prayer. And Andrew and Cecilia and Admire, welcome. Praying for you as well this day. Good 
Good morning, Blanca and Vinette. I'm glad you're both here holding you in prayer. And good morning, Esther and Susan. It's good to have both of you praying for you today. Good morning, Renetta. Good morning, Genevieve. Uh, it's good to have you both here today praying for you. And Sheila and Marilyn, I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And Donna, we will pray for uh, traveling mercies for your family this, this weekend. Um, as well as holding in prayer. Uh, somebody else asked for a prayer request. Sheila, we're praying for your aunt. Uh, good morning, Debbie and Betty. It's good to have you here holding you in prayer. I think I already said good morning to Betty. Good morning, Augusta and Ingrid. It's good to have you here. And Michelle and Barbara. I'm glad you're here as well holding you in prayer today. And good morning, Yolette. I'm glad you're here too. Praying for you all as we start this day together. So yesterday, last night, I figured out how we're going to get to Easter in Mark's gospel perfectly. So it's a little maneuvering, but uh, the plan is that we will get to Resurrection Morn in Mark's Gospel on Easter. So I'm looking forward to the continuing this, this journey with all of you. And today we are at Mark 12, verses 13 through 17. Mark 12, 13 through 17. So um, if you would like to turn in your Bibles, we have been traveling through the Gospel of Mark. And my plan was always to, to, to get us to Easter. Of course, we would get to Easter, but would we get there on Easter? But the plan is now we will. So I'm very excited. I'm excited to be with you in this journey moving forward. So if you want to turn to Mark 12, verse 13, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And uh, it's good to start each morning together to be able to open up God's word, hear what God might, what God was saying to people in the time of Jesus, what God is saying to us in this day, uh, and to pray for one another. So I'm glad you're with us today. Let's jump into scripture. Okay, Mark 12 verse 13 says, then they, went, they sent to, to him some Pharisees and some Herodians, Pharisees and Herodians, to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, why are you putting me to the test? Bring me the denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They said, the emperors. Jesus said to them, give to the emperor the things that are the emperors and to God, the things that are gods, that are gods. And they were utterly amazed at him. Whew. So things are heating up. The pressure is on Jesus. I mean, it's always been, but it's gotten, it's getting, it's getting much harder. Um, at this point, they are looking for any way that they can entrap him and um, imprison him and eventually take his life. And Jesus knows this. Jesus knows this, but it's not time yet. So today, not only do the Pharisees come, they send the Pharisees and they send the Herodians. So basically they are sending the leaders in um, the religious section of that, that, uh, that land, and they are sending Herodians, which would have had their allegiance to Rome. 
and they their point is to trap him because they are hoping he will say one or the other if he says um, that uh, it, that that we should pay it's lawful to pay the tax to Rome they will say this is against our belief uh, there shouldn't even be an image on this coin because uh, that would say that our allegiance isn't to, to God and the religious leaders would entrap him. If he said it is lawful to not pay that tax, then the, 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 the Roman leaders would say, you know, he is teaching the people and, and, and stirring up controversy, and they would entrap him from that section. So their, their point was to bring together these two groups who don't agree with each other at all, who both want to get rid of Jesus, both groups. And they come together and they try to entrap him. And Jesus says to them, First of all, he says, this coin that has the, the, the head of, of Caesar, give it to Caesar. It's not, it, I mean, it doesn't belong to us. It's no good for us. Give it to Caesar. And give to God the things that belong to God. And there's no way that they can entrap him. I love that Jesus actually points out, why are you trying to entrap me? What are you doing? What is going on with you that you're so intent on destroying me? Now, I know that Jesus understood that probably his words would not make a difference. They'd already set their mind up. They wanted to get rid of him. That was their intent. But he still speaks to it. I want to I want to believe on some level that Jesus hoped for some sort of transformation for these people. So what does this say to us in today's world? Well, Jesus is speaking to the fact that there are two kingdoms, right? There are the kingdoms of this world, and then there is God's kingdom. And Jesus was beginning to enter in God's kingdom. Like the fact that Jesus was with them, he was teaching them, he was living kingdom values. But he is saying here that you are living between these two um, in and not of this world, right? So we are in the world. Like we are, we have to pay taxes. We have to do, be a part of the society of this world. We are, in, we are continually bombarded by this world and the kingdoms of this world. Uh, and it is so easy to get swept up and um, lost in it. But we are also a part of God's kingdom. As followers of Jesus, as ones who, who um, have faith in, in in God and what God is doing in this world, we are a part of, we are not only a part of God's kingdom, but we are called to be a part of co-creating the kingdom here, right? So we are in it, but we are not of it. So the question for us um, is, as you walk throughout your lives, your daily, your days, how are you living with kingdom values because they are very different from the values of the world around us. When you look back over your day, how were you living kingdom values? Values that say that the lost and the last and the least matter in our world. Kingdom values that say I'm gonna offer grace to this person who maybe just cut me off as I'm driving down the highway. Kingdom values that say, it matters how I care for the person that is living on the street. I mean, there's so many. All we have to do is look at what did Jesus do? How did Jesus live? 
And are we living that way? Or is our living more attuned with the ways of the world, right? Because we're in the world. We, you, can't, you can't take yourself out of the world. I mean, if you do, I, I think we're missing the point. We are in the world. But how do we live kingdom the way that, how do we follow the, the model of Jesus in the midst of this world? And that's the harder challenge. And I think this is what I know, I mean, this is what I see Jesus saying today. Yes, that denarius, that goes to Caesar. But we need to give to God the things that are God's. And there are so, there's so much more that God has given us. These coins mean nothing. But all of the ways that God has loved us and cared for us, the very creation, our very breath. So I don't know why I wrote this down. Sometimes when I'm listening to the <clears throat> opening song, uh, something triggers for me. So the words that triggered for me today was heart of my own heart. Heart of my own heart. And I think when our hearts are aligned with kingdom values, and that takes work takes daily work. Am I lining up my heart with God's heart? So let us pray. God, we come before you today acknowledging that too often our hearts have not been right, have not been lined up, aligned with your heart. We have let the, the worries of this world, we have let the ideals and the values of this world, we have let power and privilege and money <laughs> corrupt us from seeing your way and your will. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not cared for the needs of others. And so we come before you today in need of your grace, in need of your um, compassion, in need of your guidance. Be thou our vision this day, Lord. That as we move throughout the day, we might see the world the way you see it. That we might see one another uh, as if we are looking at your very face. Forgive us, Lord, and lead us back. Help us to live in this world, but not become uh, a part of the brokenness of this world that our very living and our loving will be um, a reflection of your great love for all, for all of us. Heart of my own heart. Lord, lead me so that my heart is aligned with you, aligned with your values, aligned with your will, aligned with your love. We ask all of this, Lord Jesus, in your precious name, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
So, oh, good morning, Rachel and Cordelphia. It's good to have you both here today. So today, heart of my own heart, how is your heart this day aligned with kingdom values? Are you walking in the way of Jesus? It's good to be with you. Um, tomorrow, Karen will be here. And I will be back with you on Saturday. So have a very blessed day, my friends. And I will see you on Saturday. Bye, friends.